are you doing? You may well know that Transit Face is soon to be rehomed. But if you didn't know, then I can tell you this. Transit Face is soon to be rehomed. This is Transit Face. I am sat in Transit Face. Oh, what's that? Oh, I just found a bit of uh, fish batter. Yeah, a while back I had uh, fish and chips sat in here and I obviously flung a bit of batter onto the dashboard for old time's sake. The decision was made by me that Transit Face wasn't earning its keep. Plus it needs an MOT. Oh, I did mention this in a video and a few people were interested. Uh, but somebody in particular who's a good friend of mine is taking it. But I don't know exactly when. In the meantime, I think I should give it a clean up. Now. As Transit Face is soon to be going, I thought it might be a good idea to have a history of Transit Face. Yes. That's better. A few years ago, before the invention of Projects Nigel and the channel, I had a Vauxhall Movano. And that may seem irrelevant to this video and this transit, but it's not because that truck broke down quite catastrophically whilst on the way to North Allerton to pick up a Rover 620 Ti. And because of that, I had to go looking for another truck. But this video isn't about a Vauxhall Movano, so that makes it irrelevant, except for that one particular fact just there. But anyway, armed with the money that I did have for the Rover 620 and the thousand pound I got for my truck because it was completely wrecked, I went on the hunt for another recovery truck. I travelled west to go and see a smiley face transit that was quite cheap actually, but when I got there the corrosion was amazing, it was like patch upon patch upon patch right the way to the top there like that. Obviously I didn't buy this truck because it was a bag of shit. So I went home and the next day off I went, travelling west again to go and look at a Mercedes 308. You know the 308? The one that looks like Kevin Bacon. Now this was a truck that didn't need any welding. It was sound. It had a lovely sweet engine. But there was just one problem. The width of it. The bed was only six foot wide and I didn't really see that that would be enough. So I went back home and then later that day I found Transit Face, before it was called Transit Face, it was just called a Transit Recovery Truck. On the very street, I spent quite a few of my teenage years. Interesting, eh? Well, curious at least. And that truck was obviously this truck. Now at the time, it didn't have this Project Nigel scribbled down the side of it. Or a few other things. The first thing I did when I brought this truck back was to change the oil and filter and the auxiliary belt. Good, change that. Then I did the diff oil as well because the diff's noisy and it's still noisy. I bought this truck with 12 months MOT and uh, do you know, I don't know, my memory's failing me a bit but I can't really remember really what I did with it before the MOT ran out. One thing I did do though was to buy back this car here. And you know, this car is called Nigel and incidentally, I'm going to do another video on this dedicated to all the cars that have donated panels and other bits to this car. Now that's irrelevant to this video, except of course for the fact that because I had the truck, I could go and pick up the stricken Nigel. Stricken because it had a flat battery. I bought this vehicle in March 2019. Seven months later, came the start of Project Nigel. And in the meantime, that is, that's the bit I don't remember. I mean, I would if I really started to think about it and check through my Facebook stuff. That's where Facebook's handy, actually, because you can put memories to times. Anyway, that's irrelevant to this story, except that bit there. Back to this, uh, Nigel. Nigel was here before Project Nigel. The car was here, the car was already undergoing some changes and was already called 
project, Nigel. And when I took it for its uh, first MOT, having got it back, the uh, chaps in the garage vandalised it with pens. I'm going to say actually that this vehicle served me very well for that first year. And then it kind of sat in the yard because it needed a few bits doing for the MOT. And I did some transit resurrection videos, if you've seen them. And if you haven't, you could have a look. And if you don't want to, don't. But basically it needed for its MOT a couple of tyres and the fuel tank uh, saddle thing, yeah, strap, the fuel tank strap had corroded and I made a new one, yeah, I did it and senior mustard, but I think I did most of it, it was actually good fabricating, well not properly fab, well yeah I mean it was bending metal into a particular shape, drilling holes, all that kind of thing, all good fun. The rear lamps were also replaced because the old LED ones were useless and so Senior Mustard did all the wiring for this. And then there was the windscreen. The windscreen had developed a crack. A crack on a windscreen is fine as long as it's, as long as the sweep of the blade doesn't get into it. And it didn't because I put a smaller blade on. The trouble is it becomes expensive keeping a vehicle like this on the road and I felt my first year with this vehicle wasn't really a particularly useful one it didn't pay for itself you see and that's why it took so long to get it back on the road because it hadn't earned me any money so when I did finally get it back on the road I made sure it went to work and I did take on quite a few long distance jobs such as going all the way to Kent with Dan Vitesse not seen him for a while actually to go and pick up a Rover 45 that then ended up here anyway. I also went to a place called Cornwall with my friend Turb where we picked up a Tourer. Now that is two very very long jobs but it also had many many jobs around you know more locally maybe going 100 miles maybe going 120 I did absolutely loads of them. Probably the best day it had was when I delivered two cars that were both mine. There was Project Dan which I took to Scunthorpe and then later on, I went up to Lancaster or one of those other places that nobody's heard of to go and deliver Project Morris. If I was doing stuff like that every week, it would work. It would. It would be okay. Uh, but I'm not. And I wasn't. As soon after that, I got involved with the Drive Tribe Rover 25 Resurrection Restoration thing with Mad Ford Engineering. And that um, saw me delivering another car down there and getting to know quite well the owner of the place, Mick, who did me quite a few good turns. One of the things that did go wrong with this particular vehicle was a sticky front caliper. Yes, and uh, where I would find it would just coast and just uh, lurch to a stop. So I found myself trying not to use the brakes so that it could just ease itself off Whatever the case, that's a good driving practice. The brakes worked, but once they were on, they didn't want to come back off. That's basically what was going on. I mean, they would come off, but not properly. So they'd always be that little bit just sticking there, and it was not particularly good for fuel economy. One day, I did a particular deal with Mick where he would sort out the caliper in exchange for something from me. Parts, basically. So he bought the caliper, and I went down there with another delivery of something else and um, he fitted it. But whilst fitting it, discovered that the flexi pipe was also wrong. And that's why it was causing the problem in the first place. In fact, the flexi pipe was the original problem. It just made the caliper go wrong. That led to a rather disastrous and slightly amusing snowy day because we had to go back and forth trying to get these parts and uh... oh and also he discovered that something on the hub wasn't done up properly and at any moment it could have come off whilst there one day he even gave me a gift of a stereo because i had no stereo in my truck having no stereo it always tended to be one of those things where my mind would just wander a bit more so it gave me the opportunity to just think up strange things um, and the stereo um, isn't wired in. Still, never, I never got around to it. That's amazing, isn't it? Most people 
would go mad if they didn't have a stereo. Me, actually, I'm not mad. I'm just a bit eccentric and I've stopped caring about whether anybody notices or not. Anyway, besides all that, nothing else has really gone wrong besides the headlamp misting up and the winch stopping working at one point. Um, yep, yeah. um, and the window that occasionally wanted to come off on that door that doesn't work. Uh, right, so yeah, sort of a head into a rather inconclusive video here because I was going to wash it, clean it up, make it look make it look as presentable as possible. Mike's going to take this with the graffiti on it. He's not bothered about that. But I don't want him taking away all that green stuff. So that is the conclusion. Yeah, it's a bit of a letdown, isn't it? But it's a it's a story. That's all it is. It's just it's just a story. A true story. And that's where it's ending. Quite soon. <laughs> I simply put a smaller blade on so that the 